Josh Damont and his beautiful wife Angelina doing so much in the Kansas City area. Josh has spent his entire big league career with the Kansas City Royals and he joins me now. Josh, I can't thank you and Angelina enough for everything that you do uh, for pets in need and particularly bully breeds. Uh, they have such a bad reputation. They're such wonderful animals. So before we get into the baseball side of things, tell me how you and Angelina got tied up with the Kansas City Pet Project and why this is so important to you. You know, as a professional athlete, you know, you have so many different platforms that you can use um, to kind of get your word out there, kind of have a little impact in society. And, and uh, we'd be remiss if we took this opportunity for granted and, and you kind of let these years go by, because as everybody knows, they uh, they will go by quickly. So our biggest emphasis on this was really just kind of getting out there, um, finding something that we were passionate in, finding a, uh, a need, and then trying to just meet that need as best as we could. And tell me why bully breeds, because I, you know, I have a foundation of my own that deals with trying to get dogs out of the, you know, off of the streets and out of high kill shelters. And unfortunately, it's the bully breeds that are so underrepresented in terms of, you know, euthanasia rates, in terms of getting euthanized across the country and, and not being adopted. And, and why was the bully breed something that you really uh, put your emphasis and your care into? Yeah, uh, realistically, and uh, it was it's falling you know, points like yours where we see how you are able to impact the community through social media, through all these different platforms and uh, kind of take the pressure off of, uh, you know, finding an individual need for each individual pet. So kind of taking the life and, and allowing it to have a little bit more impact for each one. That was kind of our focus on these bully breeds was they were by far some of the most neglected, some of the hardest to adopt. And so by giving them a little bit of light, using our platform to kind of shine the light upon uh, the rescues are incredible. Uh, all three of ours are rescues. We have a fourth foster running around the house right now. Um, they, are the, they are the hardest to adopt. They are the hardest to kind of get um, this home and everything found. So by shining light on the fact that there are so many, there are these sweet, loving little animals, extremely loyal. Um, you know, that, that was our, that was our best thing was, was to shine light on those that, you know, aren't going to get the light themselves. Um, they get one chance to live. And, uh, it was kind of our, our calling on this, on this side to kind of focus on that bully breed. Yeah, you're giving voice to the voiceless, and I keep hoping, I keep hoping that that fourth becomes a foster fail. I keep trying to tell Angelina to convince you uh, to make it a foster oh. fail. Where are we on that? He's are you adding this one to the, to the clan? <laughs> Yeah, his name is Muffler. So if you guys want to adopt, he's incredible. He's at uh, MPR, Missouri Pitbull Rescue. He was uh, initially taken in by KCPP and transferred there. He is an absolute sweetheart. He is making it really hard to uh, foster him and, and and not foster fail. But he's, uh, he's a great dog. And it, and it kind of makes it interesting. You know, we have three dogs. He jumped right in. Um, these pit bulls have such a bad rap with all the you know, aggressive nature and all this other stuff. And a lot of that comes from their backing where they're extremely loyal animals. They'll, you know, they're always looking for cues. They're always looking for this other stuff. But uh, as breeding has gone on in any breed, some breed for characteristics, some breed for, um, you know, looks and all this other stuff, pit bulls were bred for loyalty. They were bred for size. And so when it comes back to this whole idea of making sure these dogs find the right home, that's the biggest problem <laughs> is, the fact that these dogs were bred for a certain thing, um, you know, they didn't choose to be bred like that. They they were given a life, they're given all this other stuff. So allowing them to be in a home where they can kind of do their thing, they can kind of um, be allowed to live and have a, uh, you know, an owner that understands the breed, uh, that's, that is our biggest thing. Yeah, that's why, you know, that such importance on adoption and rescuing and fostering is so critical. Uh, you know, like Bob Barker, the late Bob Barker used to say, you know, spay and neuter your pets, help control that pet population. Uh, it is so oh, yeah. important. All right. But let's uh, let's get back to baseball a little bit. Obviously, that's why you're here. That's why uh, you have the platform that you have. Tell us a bit about the rehab process. I know that you went through thoracic outlet um, surgery when you're dealing with that. And, and tell me more about where you are about getting back on the field. Yeah, so uh, extremely exciting. We had the surgery about 25 days ago, so we're in week four of rehab. Um, it's been just day after day kind of getting after it. Leading up into the surgery, we had a little bit of time, so we just showed up every single day just trying to have that mentality of like, look, if we take positivity and we take everything into this and we run through this as, as well as we can, we're essentially giving ourselves the best option to have success. Um, coming out of surgery, 
we really, you know, hit the ground running. Um, you're 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 down uh, quite a bit after the COS stuff. The first rib is is not the most um, comfortable thing, but you know, our our biggest goal. This is like this is my career. I only have one shot at this. Um, the cards I was dealt anatomically, we had some interesting stuff going on in there. So uh, when the doctor opened it up and kind of saw everything going on, he goes, "Wow, yep, there's you know there's your issue, there's your problem. Let's let's help solve it." Um, so here we are three weeks later, running, lifting, doing everything like normal, um, way ahead of schedule. So it, it's it's a extremely encouraging sign. Um, just one of those things that we're focusing on day one next year. Um, you know, every time you wake up in the morning, it's like, what what progress can I make today? How much can I, you know, impact this? And uh, I, I I can't be happier with where we are with, uh, you know, kind of the prognosis that I was given beforehand. No, oh, that's great to hear. And uh, you're eyeing the 2024 season. Obviously, unlikely you return this year, but it seems like you're ahead of schedule, which is great. Now, what exactly did the doctor find? Is there something that you can share with us that he's like, oh, wow, yeah. here's here's what's yeah. going on. What was it? So, so TOS is a very interesting thing. It impacts people um, in three different ways. There's neural, there's venous, and then there's arterial. So it kind of has a balancing act with all three of those categories. Um, mine was more um, arterial and venous before, and then they, you know, they ended up opening it up right in here. Uh, you have two scalings that come down anterior, and then you're going to have medial and usually you have two muscle bundles and I had four and they were kind of wove like this. And then you had the arteries and veins um, and nerves going through those. So as you open that up, saw that it was just an anatomical, anatomical variation. Um, he was like, wow, easy cleanup, kind of do all this stuff. And uh, now you're just kind of getting strength and recovery back. So a lot of our symptoms beforehand are um, it's kind of like falling asleep on your arm and, and it, it just doesn't feel the same. It's swollen. Um, and as those muscles and the, the scalene muscles hypertrophied, they would just kind of squeeze and pinch those off, um, allowing for, you know, the only thing that I use in my life uh, for my for my job, my arm, uh, to not have the same feeling. So it feels incredible after, again, for being in this third and fourth week, uh, you, you really can't ask for much more um, range of motion. Everything's good. So I there's a smile on my face every single day I wake up. Oh, that's great. I mean, it sounds incredibly complicated from a medical standpoint, but it seems like you're under great care and uh, you're doing well. So we're happy about that because we want to see you back on the mound pitching and doing what you love. Josh, thanks Can't for wait. taking a minute to be with us. It's it's great to talk to you. I am so grateful to you and to Angelina for what you're doing with the KC Pet Project and all of the awareness that you're bringing to a great breed. Um, and, and keep it up, and we look forward to seeing you pitch next season.